I'm a kinesiologist. I study human movement. To be more specific, I study the biomechanics of human movement. So biomechanics is the science that uses the principles of mechanics to understand how forces applied to the body affect movement. But this is my joy. My, my passion is trying to understand how movement emerges from the body, all the delicious details of muscles, bones, joints, and brain. My research uh, looks at how human movement expresses the emotions and the feelings, uh, sometimes primal feelings, of the person who lives in this body. <laughs> but somewhere along the way, somewhere along this path as a dance student where I love the experience of making expressive human movement, some other questions popped up and started to intrigue me. How in the world does the body do this? How are these movements generated and controlled? How does body structure affect its function? How does performing these movements affect the body itself? So in the end, these questions were the ones that captured me uh, and my imagination. And so my path diverged to science. So now I find myself in the classroom teaching kinesiology students about how the body does this. So these movement science students are uh, budding professionals, health professionals. Many of them aspire to go on to become physicians or physical therapists. And they're oriented towards science. So I, uh, in the classroom then, I find very, very, very bright students, you know, because you're some of them, they're typical U of M students, who are very bright. They're very good at solving equations of motion and memorizing anatomical detail. But they really struggle when they try to apply that knowledge to actual human motion. When they observe a movement, they don't see the biomechanics. When they look at a movement like this, I want them to see this. I view my students' struggles in being able to see the biomechanics in a movement that they're looking at and understand the biomechanics as a failure of their imaginations. So, how do I cultivate imagination in hardcore science students? How can I create a learning environment that's going to stimulate their imaginations and get them to tap into some other way of knowing that's going to enrich their understanding of human movement. I need them to play. I need a sandbox that they can move in. So it turns out that this sandbox actually exists at the University of Michigan, and you can find it in the library, in the digital media commons. The digital media commons had just the sandbox I was looking for, a motion capture studio and a computer animation lab. So we would hold class in a digital sandbox. Appropriately enough, the first game we played in the sandbox was bouncing balls. So the students needed to take spheres, get them to bounce, apply their physics so that they would look realistic. They could look at the motions, they could see the graphs and begin to understand how equations related to the motions they were observing. So I expected that these science students would make animations that looked like this. Correct, perfectly reasonable, fine. But this is what they did. Clearly, Working in this sandbox was tapping into parts of them I didn't know existed. 
They were building whole environments, making context. They were making the viewer anticipate movement. These balls had motivation. <laughs> Sensory elements of color and form and texture emerged. They were telling stories. They were playing. This being a kinesiology class, we had to get back to the business of human movement. <laughs> so the first task I asked them to do was to animate a simple movement, walking. What they quickly realized <laughs> is that walking is not so simple. And they really began to appreciate all the complexities and subtleties of human movement. They applied what they knew about the biomechanics of gait and crafted their movements, but the movements didn't look quite right, so they began to wonder about what went wrong. They began to imagine the biomechanics. So what's the next step here? Well, we'll uh, go to the source and capture actual human movement. So into the motion capture studio we went, put markers on the body, the cameras pick up the motion of all of those markers, the computer translates that marker motion into point clouds that represents the captured human movement. And as I'm sure you're aware, these point cloud data can drive human character models. This is the basis of performance capture in the movie industry. But those point cloud data are just numbers, the very same numbers that movement science, scientists use to analyze the biomechanics. So now we have everything we need. Except the ability to move forward. OK. <laughs> all right. So now the students have all the toys they need in this sandbox. They can animate, they can layer animation now on top of this walking movement. Now they have <laughs> all the subtleties and complexities to work with. They can begin to look at the style, the performance of human movement. They can take the motions that they captured in the studio and put them in a real world context. Now, biomechanics matter. The biomechanics have a real world consequence. Sometimes the environments they created, the worlds they created, were definitely in the imaginations of some sun-starved Michigan students in the middle of winter semester. <laughs> uh, here you can feel the sun on these individuals. Um, they were looking at obesity and the effect on knee joint biomechanics and stair climbing. The sandbox allowed these students to visualize motions that nobody has ever seen. So this group of students looked at the arm motions of our hominid ancestors trying to crack open a termite mound for lunch on a savanna uh, long ago and far away. So with this sandbox then, the students were able to visualize biomechanics that no one has ever seen before. Of course, students looked at the movements they were interested in. And uh, here we have the effect of high heels on a walking motion. By putting this motion on a runway in the spotlight, they're literally illuminating the effect of high heels on gait biomechanics. By fleshing out the biomechanics, they're also able to start considering the effect of biomechanics on, on gender, the relationship between the two. In this group, <laughs> the issue of gender was looked at directly. Yes, we got a guy in high heels. And we'll just watch that again, because it's just so good. <laughs> OK. So 
By working with human motion in this digital sandbox then, students could begin to visualize biomechanical concepts. Here the center of mass of the body during walking is being illustrated beautifully, dynamically, and how the center of mass passes between the feet during walking. This is the stuff that's close to a biomechanics professor's heart. Okay. But this student, without any words, without any equations, without any numbers, is actually teaching biomechanics to the viewer. Teaching continues here. This group was looking at the biomechanics in moonwalking, which I will not demonstrate. <laughs> and after they sorted it out for themselves, they were able to guide the viewer's eyes to see the biomechanics. And finally, body movements change over time. Here, we're, the students were looking at the effect of skeletal development on lower extremity biomechanics, and they were able to put it in the context of an actual children's game in an urban environment. Okay, so after all this ball bouncing, walking, jumping, and throwing, what are we left with? Working in this digital sandbox tapped into a creative vein in these students that unfortunately, I think too often, goes untapped in a science education the abundance of imagination that flowed from that creative vein was a surprise to me, and I think more importantly, a surprise to the students. They staged human movement, lit it, gave it form and color, felt it. They had the material of human movement in their hands where they could work with it, explore it, manipulate it, get messy. So, do you think that this made any difference? Did this improve the quality of their science education? I believe it did. I believe that tapping into their imaginations was critical to their learning and really deepened their fundamental understanding of, of human movement. Without imagination, science stays on the page. Biomechanics is just numbers and equations. But with imagination, you and your science comes to life. Thank you.